Xabi Alonso is a player who is lauded for his elegance, and widely regarded as one of the best holding midfielders of a generation. As a player, he has won it all, and as a manager, in his second season at the top flight, he has created a winning culture, bringing Bayer Leverkusen to a level on par with the giants of the global game. So, what do you get when you take a player who has won everything there is to win as a player, who has played for the greatest in the game, and who boasts a reputation, as one of the most graceful and elegant players of a generation, and turn him into a manager. You get a tactician, who is taking the game by storm, implementing a system that is bearing incredible results. Xabi Alonso is proving himself to be a master of the game, with Bayer Leverkusen playing some of the most scintillating football in the world at the moment. He has produced a team that has demonstrated one of the most ruthless and efficient attacks in world football, and a team that is exceeding even the wildest expectations. Precision, and attention to detail have always been a facet of Alonso's game, as a player who has always appreciated the finer details of play. Alonso did not excel in the physical aspects of football, rather, he was a chess player on the pitch. A midfield general, who organized play, and prioritized being in the right place, at the right time. A player who had an uncanny ability to anticipate, constantly asking questions of the opposition from afar. It is now, that we are beginning to see the seeds, that were planted and nurtured throughout his illustrious career begin to blossom, into something special. Their combination of coordinated attacking movements, passing and rondos, in addition to precision defending, has resulted in an undefeated season until this time of writing, week 13 of the Bundesliga season. Bayer currently holds court with the blue bloods of European football, in nearly all statistical categories, proving a radical transformation. So, how has he done it? Alonso's tactics revolve around possession, and making the most of it. As of week 13 of this current Bundesliga season, Leverkusen sits second on the table for the all-important stat, and this foundational principle of controlling the match leads his playing style. He achieves this control, by deploying a 3-4-3 formation, that adapts to a 3-4-1-2, 3-4-2-1, or 3-2-5. His system is characterized by placing all of the proper components with the proper attributes, within their proper alignments and positions. At the base of his formation, Alonso plays a back three that possess good height, speed, and athleticism. This back three normally consists of Edmund Tapsaba, Jonathan Ta, and Odilon Kasanu. In terms of attributes, Ta is distinguished for his strength and aerial ability, while Tapsaba and Kasunu are each players with a very high ceiling and potential. The backline is flanked on either side by returning wingbacks, meaning that each player is equally involved in attack as defense. On the left is Alex Grimaldo, a player who is rapid, highly technical, with excellent playmaking ability, shooting and crossing. On the right is Jeremy Frimpong, one of the fastest players in the Bundesliga. Frimpong's performances in the 2023-24 season are earning him recognition as one of the finest young right backs in the world, and a large part of his ascent is related to Alonso's utilization of the Dutchman. Internally, Alonso prefers a double pivot system to connect each tier. His pivot consists of Swiss international, and hard man, Granite Xhaka who possesses incredible passing ability, distribution, and shooting ability from range. Paired with Aixiquiel Palacios, who has a high work rate, and excellent tackling abilities. The two central midfielders balance each other well, with Palacios covering the most range, being the faster, and more athletic of the two. Each midfielder remains centrally fixed for the majority of the match, with their primary responsibilities being to maintain placement in front of the three-man backline, forming a central pentagon, in proximity. Up front, Alonso alters his three-man attacking alignment. Since he plays attacking wingbacks, his formation is afforded midfielders, who can operate along the interior, forming a two-man base of an attacking triangle. On the left is German prodigy, Florian Wirtz. The youngster, who is just a year removed from a cruciate ligament tear, has not missed a beat since his return. Alonso is proving to be the right coach for the right moment, giving Wirtz complete freedom all over the attacking third. Wirtz's game is characterized by incredible dribbling, ball control, reactions and vision. With the potential to be a generational talent. The other half of the base of Alonso's attacking triangle is right midfielder, Jonas Hoffman, another player with incredible vision, with excellent passing ability, stamina, and positional awareness. At the front is Victor Boniface, another young player with exceptional, potentially generational talent. The Nigerian is built tough, with a solid, strong frame, however, he is agile, nimble and elusive. As a result, 
he does not remain centrally fixed, despite being the focal point of Alonso's attack. As a right-footed player, Boniface frequently operates in the left attacking half spaces, in the attacking phase, vacating the space for either Florian Wirtz, or Jonas Hoffman, who rotate along the line, invading the space as secondary strikers. All of these components, in this alignment, have contributed to exceptional stats and results across the board, proving Alonso's player identification, and man management skills. As mentioned prior, Alonso's system is predicated on possessional, and positional domination. However, Alonso achieves possessional dominance by completely defying conventional football wisdom. The neutral third of the pitch comprises one of the most highly contested spaces of the field. As a result, many teams attempt to play through the center with caution. It was not until tactical revolutionaries such as Johan Cruyff, and his successor Pep Guardiola, turned the game on its head by holding the center of the pitch or controlling the neutral third with a tactical system. It is well established that he who controls the neutral third, controls the match, and the most elite teams in the game's history have demonstrated this. First established by Johan Cruyff's Barcelona, who played a 3-4-3 diamond system, in which Pep Guardiola was a key feature, the Dutchman's system involved control through alignment. Cruyff established the Barca way, by dominating possession in a highly aesthetic style. At the base of the diamond was Pep Guardiola, who maintained the center of the pitch, as a central focal point in the system's pivot. Guardiola's central placement made him always available, alleviating pressure, from teammates, while alternating and maintaining the flow of play, and retaining the attack. This system was revolutionary for the modern game, forcing the opposition to rethink their concept of the middle block. The 3-4-3 diamond ensured that triangles were maintained throughout the entire pitch, at all times, as outlined in the coach's voice's incredible article on Cruyff's system. The diamond was maintained by his wing-backs operating within the midfield, while playing both inverted, as well as wide. He also played a 10, or central attacking midfielder, offering a central link to the pivot, while allowing his striker to remain advance. Triangles connected each man across the entire pitch, while ensuring that lanes and space were always available to the ball carrier. By playing expansively, the pitch opened up for the ball to be distributed, or space to be taken. Cruyff also gave his backline license to advance with the ball on several occasions. This was facilitated by Pep Guardiola filling the vacancy of the advancing player. Cruyff also had his number 9, Denmark's Michael Laudrup frequently withdraw into the midfield to participate in build-up play, or split the central forward space with the number 10, prolific playmaker and goal scorer, Jose Baccaro. In this case, a central, inverted attacking triangle could exploit space, while two strikers remained advanced. Through Guardiola, Cruyff's brilliant philosophies live on. Cruyff's tactical philosophies such as positional play with strategic total football with highly technical players, constant width, inverted winger strikers, playing a high defensive line for a highly aggressive attack, and utilizing the goalkeeper as an extra outfield player in the build-up phase, to ensure that his forwards remain in advanced space, still endure to Guardiola's contemporary version. Guardiola achieved the same objective with his legendary 4-3-3 system, which involved an inverted midfield triangle, and a false nine, which can be viewed as a similar diamond. Guardiola utilized technical specialists to control the run and pace of play completely. Guardiola's system improved Cruyff's ideas with the use of rondos for tiki-taka football, or rapid, one-and-two touch play, by congregating players together. He employed a pivot, Sergio Busquets, who functioned in the same way as Guardiola did for Cruyff. Sergio Busquets, Xavi Hernandez, and Andres Iniesta, formed the engine of a remarkable system that has left a nearly unbeatable legacy. The results were elaborate attacking patterns, and long periods of uninterrupted possession, leading to incredible team goals, and one of the most aesthetic and successful playing styles in the game's history. Alonso's style is halfway between Guardiola's and Cruyff's, adapting aspects of each. Alonso's method of holding the center is slightly varied, however his system prioritizes the tactic. Alonso aligns in the 3-4-2-1 formation, however he deploys a double-six adaptation, and plays without a designated attacking midfielder, as opposed to Cruyff's 3-4-3 diamond, and Guardiola's 4-3-3 false nine, which adapted the striker's position as a false nine, with Messi forming the diamond's sharpest point. Alonso's wingbacks maintain a high and wide alignment, contributing constant width to the system. Alonso alters between a flat attacking three, with inverted wingers, and an attacking triangle, allowing rotations in the advanced line for varied methods of attack. 
Positional play is highly important to Alonso, with his team maintaining a consistent shape for the majority of the match, in both attack and defense. In defense, he normally plays a 4-3-2-1, with one of his fullbacks returning to the back line, while the other operates between the back and front line, as a spare man. Or an adapted 4-1-3-1, where one of the pivots, usually Palacios takes the flank, with the other maintaining the hole, or dropping into the defensive line. In attack, Alonso usually maintains constant width, playing his wing backs high and wide, in the 3-2-5, however, recently, his wing backs have been withdrawing into the midfield, to maintain control. With his pivots, he can either advance them as double eights or split them, advancing one, while the other holds his position. We will now examine how Alonso establishes control of the match in each phase of the game, in full detail. To understand how Xabi Alonso holds the center of the pitch, we will refer to the pitch division philosophy that is deployed by some managers, including Alonso. This theory takes the three primary sections of the pitch, and further divides it into six sub-segments, for a total of 18 zones. Phase 1, the breakout phase, comprises zones 1 to 6. Despite currently leading the Bundesliga in total touches, by a considerable amount, Bayer sit second last in the league for touches in the defensive third. Bayer seek to transition into the midfield as quickly as possible, to decrease their chances of being countered in their zone. Leverkusen's keeper, Lukas Horodetsky, leads the team in touches within the space, demonstrating Alonso's devotion to keeping his outfield players as far up the pitch as possible. Alonso seeks to minimize the touches in his own zone, with a three-man back line, with his wing backs advancing into the midfield, forcing the opposition to adapt to the threat. The opposition has three primary modes to regain the ball. With the first being the deep, high-volume press, where numbers are devoted. To deal with this, Alonso can expand his back three, with his wide center backs occupying zones one or three, and four or six. This is enabled, because Alonso's wing backs operate in a staggered alignment in advanced space. Jermaine Frimpong maintains his position as far up the pitch as possible, as a direct transitional outlet. Alex Grimaldo also gains separation, but to a lesser extent, as he makes himself available as a transitional outlet and link player with either Granite Xhaka, or Florian Wirtz. This tactic expands the space, with minimal players, in turn dispersing the oppositional numbers. It also creates angles for through balls into vacant space. When the opposition attempts the all-out deep press, where they try and compress the space, Bayer seeks width to create as much distance from their goal as possible, with a collective understanding of where support will be. Alonso's double pivots, and the wingbacks, or the interior midfielders, gain proximity to the back line to offer to receive. This forms an immediate rondo, with a pentagon, while also offering width. In these highly pressurized situations, the ball carrier and receiver must have the composure to take the pass and receive under pressure. However, the rondo ensures that a man will always be free, as Bayer maintain numerical superiority. As a collective, Bayer maintains the highest average passing accuracy in the Bundesliga, and Alonso's constant use of rondos enables this, in addition to having ice gold operators as passers. Jonathan Ta and Edmund Topsaba occupy number one and four respectively for the highest average passing accuracy in the Bundesliga. Once the initial lines of resistance are breached, Bayer can initiate fastbreak transitions, where they are extremely lethal. The opposition plays a massive gamble, by pressing too deeply with Bayer, with too many players, as Alonso's side is adept at navigating through vacant space for a devastating result. When the opposition initiates a more conservative press, in the form of the high and compact block, Bayer plays a back two, with Ta and Tapsaba, while the third back, Adilian Kasanu inverts and advances, providing a wider angle into space. Grimaldo does the same on the opposite side, 
offering an immediate passing option to Tapsaba, as a right-footed player. The double pivots maintain their alignment immediately advance of the center-back pairing. While Granit Xhaka can also drop into the back line as a spare man, to form a back three, as Kasanu remains high and inverted. When the opposition attempts to pin Leverkusen with numbers, Xhaka can distribute the ball at range, as the deep-lying playmaker. The concentrated block of oppositional players makes the opposition more predictable, and Bayer can either attempt to play through the compact block, or seek Kasanu on the blind side from this alignment. Along the interior, the inverted wingers can also operate along the inner or outer channels, offering line-breaking options to the back line, and an immediate linking option with the wingbacks. They are not limited to either flank, and can drift along the lines to congregate with their teammates. The internal winger's presence also creates a further conundrum, to mark them loosely, or tightly. Tight marking forces the oppositional backline higher up the pitch, leaving more space behind them for Bayer to exploit in the event of a breach. Loose marking means that they will have more space to attack upon reception, for easier fast-break transitions, as a result of the space. Due to his speed and agility Kasanu is more lethal as the blindside outlet. Here, the Ivorian defender is afforded a lane and space to advance the ball, where he will be met by Jeremy Frimpong, who remains high and wide on the blindside. As the opposition makes up the ground, Kasanu can congregate with both Hoffman and Frimpong for superiority in a likely 3v2 attacking scenario. If the lane and space are available, Frimpong can take the outer channel to seek a cross into strong side space. Once the block is breached along the left channel, Leverkusen can utilize their numbers on the strong side, for fastbreak transitions. Once again, they are highly advantaged in these situations, due to the speed, and technical ability of their attackers. The third, and most common scenario, is that in which the opposition respects the threat of pressing too high, and immediately settles in the middle block. It is these scenarios where Alonso's system establishes the most control. At this time of writing, Bayer Leverkusen sits second in the Bundesliga for possession, while leading the league for touches in the neutral third. Bayer are arguably most devastating from attacking movements against the middle block. Bayer immediately seeks to control zones 4-9 with the formation's foundation provided by the back three. Immediately advanced, are the double pivots, who are responsible as advanced outlets to advance the ball. Alonso's rendition of control also utilizes a three-man defensive base, with the focal point being his central defender, Jonathan Ta. Bayer makes coordinated advances into neutral space, with the German varying his placement within zones 5 and 8. At his flanks, are his left, and right exterior center backs, while his double pivots remain advanced, forming a pentagonal shape, with five men. The Pentagon is highly malleable, and frequently adjusts, given the defensive scheme of the opposition. This shape allows Alonso to play his wingbacks, Grimaldo and Frimpong, as high as possible, occasionally occupying zones 10 and 12, or 13, and 15, respectively. The central Pentagon is crucial to holding the center of the pitch, and offers tremendous advantages, given the right personnel. It offers the most passing options to the ball carrier, in comparison to the triangle, or the rhomboid, allowing for not only diagonal, but also vertical, and lateral passes. It concentrates the oppositional markers into one zone, opening up width on the flanks, or on the blind side. It forces the attacking line to chase, thereby expending energy in pursuit of the ball. Alternatively, the opposition can remain static, giving the back line more time on the ball to identify weaknesses. It guarantees numerical superiority within the neutral third. Unless the opposition has the guts, to chase that high up the pitch with five men, Alonso can maintain numerical superiority, rondos, and control of the battle space.
In addition to possession, Bayer also leads the Bundesliga in completed passes, by a considerable margin. Given their style of play, it is no wonder why all five members of their central five-man alignment lead the team in both touches in the neutral third, and short-range passing. The objective is to concentrate, and absorb as many of the opposition as possible in order to offer more space to the operators along the inner or outer flanks. The double pivots, are licensed to be more active, with the shape adapting to the oppositional resistance. With five men in advanced space, the opposition must decide how many players to devote to the press in the middle block. Bayer will always maintain superiority, unless the opposition play man-to-man, -man, ensuring that a free man from the Pentagon will always be available. When the opposition press heavily, centrally, the pivots can split, as either exterior center back expands as the free man. One of the pivots can also drop into and operate within the back line. Swiss hard man, Granite Xhaka operates as the general in the midfield, leading the team in both touches in the neutral third, and carries, with the other pivot, Exequiel Palacios, in second. The figures indicate how essential his pivots are to maintaining control of the neutral third, and holding the center of the pitch. Each man is relied on heavily to locate pockets, offer to receive, take the pass under pressure, and then distribute it to sustain the play. As a result they are the most targeted players on Bayer, once again by a considerable margin. An interesting note is that Bayer leads the Bundesliga in carries, while second in progressive distribution from carries. Once again, the team leaders in the stat are all members of Alonso's central pentagon. Because Alonso places so much emphasis on maintaining an advanced forward line, he places the responsibility for transitions on his back line. Similar to Cruyff and Guardiola's systems, Alonso plays total football, with his back line frequently executing carries within the neutral third and beyond. So long as there is a lane and space, the player with the ball at his feet is licensed to carry. A ball-carrying backline increases the incidences of open ball situations, requiring the opposition to remain static in a block, or confront the ball carrier. Regardless of the action taken by the opposition, it is ensured that space will be left behind, activating the forward line to drop into the vacancies. Alonso employs this tactic frequently, represented by the fact that all three members of the backline, are within the team's top six for progressive distribution from carries. All the while, all five members of the frontline symmetrically occupy the top five for progressive receptions. Boniface is also frequently activated as the false nine, either by sharing central space with the secondary striker, or operating alone as a hold-up player. He is distinguishing himself as a world-class target man, functioning as Alonso's primary outlet against the high-to-middle block. Bayer's most targeted player for progressive passes is the right back, Jeremy Frimpong. As one of the fastest players in the Bundesliga, Frimpong is ideally suited for being isolated in 1v1 scenarios against the oppositional fullback. Here, he can exploit his speed advantage, by challenging the defender head-on, or being played into space in a foot race. As a right-footed player, 
he can take the ball deep into the flanks, and seek the cross. To isolate Frimpong, Alonso frequently creates the blind side by congregating his players along the opposite channel, Grimaldo's side, or centrally. Alonso maintains thrusting movements along the right flank by inverting Ka San U, while keeping Frimpong as high up the pitch as possible. Similar to Bayer's method of transitioning against the high block, Kasanu's inverted placement offers him a lane and space within the oppositional blindside, and an easy link for a potential 2v1, with either the defender, or Jonas Hoffman, as the interior midfielder. In a 2v2 scenario on the blindside, Hoffman, as the right interior midfielder, can easily link to create a triangle, and a 3v2 attacking scenario. He and Frimpong can alternate their positions, playing give and goes to exploit the advantage. When Casanu is occupied with defensive responsibilities, or unavailable for team selection, Palacios expands to the flanks, to serve as the apex of an inverted triangle, while also serving as the first line of defense in the event of a counter-attack. Alternatively, Bayer can set their strong side to Frimpong's flank, in which case, Grimaldo either inverts himself, into zone 10, or remains high and wide in zone 15. It is interesting to note that Alonso alternates Florian Ritz to the strong side of the attack, due to his skill set. The thrusting attacking movements down the right, with Wurtz operating on the strong side, frees Hoffman to rotate centrally, as a secondary striker, to occupy both center backs. Grimaldo is then completely isolated in space on the blind side as a result, for three attacking options for the cross, as the ball is taken into the deep flanks. Alternatively, Hoffman can maintain his position on the strong side for the complete overload, or switch positions with Wurtz altogether, and maintain his placement in the blind side. Alonso maintains a cutting edge in the attacking third, due to a highly varied attacking methodology. Everything rests upon the foundation of possession. Possession is all about what you make of it, and Alonso's Bayer has been excellent at cycling the ball to congregate, and utilize their numbers. Overloads do exactly as the name suggests, and they are the logical solution to utilizing numbers in attacking space. They present multiple options to the ball carrier, while putting the oppositional defenders in multiple minds as to how to contain the attacking threats. The attacking threat is made more potent by the fact that Alonso frequently withdraws his center forward to participate in overloads. Alonso matches the opposition with numbers when attacking, primarily on the flanks, where the risk of being countered is minimized. This is easier to accomplish within the 3-4-2-1, which creates numerical superiority by virtue of the alignment of players. The Spaniard can activate his double pivots in an 8 and 6 alignment, or advance both as double eights. Xhaka and Palacios are nearly neck and neck for touches within the attacking third, as each player works over the top, and along the interior, patrolling, controlling, and guarding zones 10 to 12 in attacking scenarios. Within these spaces, they can congregate along the sidelines to link with the fullbacks, creating superiority on either flank. Due to Granite Xhaka's range of distribution, he is the ideal player to work over the top, as a dispatcher. Xhaka leads Bayer in completed long balls, with 43 of his 46 total shot creating actions generated from live passes. Palacios also makes the most of his touches, as he is fourth on Bayer for medium range passes, and 27 of his 33 shot creating actions generated from live passes. In the attacking third, Alonso deploys a total attacking system, enhanced by the use of overloads in strategic areas of the pitch. By pinning the opposition in the low block, and spreading them out across critical zones, Bayer can then wreak havoc on zonal defensive schemes.
the opposition must respect the threats on each side, ensuring that they will be spread out. With up to seven players threatening a breach of the defensive line, the opposition must devote more numbers to their back line, thinning them out at the top. In turn, Alonso can advance his defensive line even higher up the pitch, creating superiority within the upper neutral third, or the upper attacking third to sustain the play, maintaining a triangle, rhomboid, or pentagon from zones 10 to 12, for complete control over two crucial oppositional zones. Maintaining width with such potent threats along the flanks, also enables more lethal attacks directly through the center, from the neutral third. Central attacking with high and wide wingbacks, enhanced by the threat of speed, forces the opposition into a natural low block, as the backline attempts to limit the space behind them, and the oppositional midfield line gains proximity to the backline. As the defense settles into the low block, with Bayer building play from the back, the pitch is extended, horizontally, across zones 13 to 15, expanding the pitch within the opposition's most critical areas. As the Bundesliga's second team for goal and shot creating actions, Bayer have generated a great deal of offense. Bayer generates offense with an extremely varied attacking methodology, based on their tactic of pinning the opposition in the low block, and spreading them thin between zones 13 to 15. They generate so many goals, with ruthless, German efficiency, as Leverkusen sits second for total goals scored for all of Europe's big five leagues, despite sitting 12th for shot creating actions generated. Alonso achieves great success by putting his most effective offensive players, in the most cutting-edge placements within the attacking third. As mentioned prior, Alonso frequently alternates the positioning of his attacking triangle, while commonly instructing his center forward to participate on the flanks. Jonas Hoffmann, Florian Wirtz, and Victor Boniface, are placed within the Bundesliga's top 15 for offensive actions generated. Alonso can control the opposition in this way, by controlling the center of the pitch, and forcing the opposition into this alignment through numerical attacking superiority. Not only does this spread the attacking line, by shifting the center back to shade Boniface's side, it also allows space for Alonso's secondary strikers, the two at the base of his attacking triangle, to invade. This tactic has allowed Florian Wirtz and Jonas Hoffman to excel, with each player boasting third and fourth place honors for shot creating actions generated within the Bundesliga, as of week 14. This strategy has proven to be extremely effective, as Bayer lead the Bundesliga for touches in the attacking third, while second for touches in the attacking penalty, by a massive margin. Four of Bayer's five-man attacking line, are in the top 10 for the Bundesliga for touches within the space. Once again, having a ball-carrying backline helps to allow this. Bayer sits second in the Bundesliga for both attempted and successful take-ons. Here, carries from the back inside open ball situations, which has the potential to spread the oppositional lines even further, both vertically and horizontally providing space for the advanced line to drop into. Alonso maximizes his possession with positional play, rotations, and total football. As of week 14, Bayer Leverkusen have generated the majority of their shot and goal-creating actions through take-ons. Alonso is allowing Florian Wirtz to flourish, as the youngster is neck and neck with Leroy Sané for touches in the attacking third, as well as take-ons, with Victor Boniface in third for the stat. Each player's elusiveness makes them highly suited for rotations within the attacking line. Alternating Boniface across the line gives him more angles of attack, when attacking, allowing for different angles of approach, and space to attack the defensive line. Although Boniface's strength makes him ideally suited to battle centrally, in highly contested space, Alonso challenges him to demonstrate the full range of his attacking ability in this way. Wirtz also has exceptional dribbling ability, allowing him to boss the entire attacking third, with the two proving to be an excellent one-two punch. Jonas Hoffman is also highly active in the attacking third, currently sitting second on Bayer for touches within the area. Hoffman has mastered the art of dropping into vacancies, both by the center forward, and through line-breaking passes through oppositional lines, while demonstrating brilliant off-the-ball movement, in the form of slashing diagonal runs, to isolate his teammates one-on-one -on -one with defenders. 
Hoffman is distinguished for his playmaking ability through his passing, as he leads the team for shot-creating actions generated through passes by a considerable margin. With either Boniface, Wirtz, Hoffman, or all three, drifting to the flank, attacking overloads are created, enabling rondos against a spread defensive line. The overloads place the opposition in a dilemma. They must even the numbers on the strong side flank, while also accounting for the isolated fullback on the blind side. There is also the threat of the double pivots, who advance as double eights. Each wingback makes frequent diagonal runs into and around the 18-yard box, creating extra attacking potency, while constantly occupying the oppositional fullback. Boniface's constant movement along the defensive line expounds these issues, forcing the center backs to play zonally, making it easier for Wirtz, or Hoffman as space invading strikers. When Boniface is centrally fixed, he usually occupies both center backs, meaning easier one-twos along the flanks. Frimpong and Grimaldo play second and fourth respectively for touches in the attacking penalty, a testimony to how actively they participate in Alonso's attack. They have been effective and efficient, with Grimaldo contributing 9 goals, and Frimpong with 7 for all competitions. Alonso's usage of wingbacks is similar to Filipe Scolari's innovative 3-4-1-2 system for Brazil's World Cup 2002 squad, in which legendary fullbacks Roberto Carlos and Cafu would frequently advance in the attack, only Alonso's adaptation utilizes more diagonal runs into the box, as opposed to verticals for crosses. Diagonal runs create a legitimate attacking threat from the fullback, requiring the opposition to contain the threat, creating the blindside threat, which can be exploited. The major difference is that Scolari did not need to utilize diagonal runs into the box from his fullbacks, because he had quite possibly the greatest Brazilian attacking trio in central space. Alonso enhances his attack by maintaining three proficient attackers, with enhanced thrust down the flanks with speed, isolations, diagonal runs, and blindside attacking. Leverkusen's varied list of goal scorers is impressive, with 12 different players contributing to the goal tally this season. They are the cream of the crop, boasting the second highest goal tally for all big five European leagues, proving that this is one of the most prolific attacks in world football at this moment. Due to the fact that Bayer maintains 60% possession in the Bundesliga, and 63% for the Europa League it is clear to say that they control the run of play. However, a natural consequence of controlling the run of play is being dispossessed of the ball. It is no coincidence that the Bundesliga's most progressive teams, with the highest possession, are also league leaders in dispossessions. To account for this, Alonso has devised an ironclad defensive system, that has mastered two crucial transitionary phases. The phase of play where the ball is immediately lost. The phase of play where the ball is immediately regained. We will explore this defensive scheme in further detail. Since Bayer attacks with so many players forward, so high up the pitch, they are extremely susceptible to counter-attacks and shot-creating actions. However, the team mitigates these risks with a total defending philosophy as well. Similar to Pep Guardiola's Barcelona, who applied a 6 seconds or less rule to win the ball back by utilizing his attacking line as his primary defenders, in the counter-press, Alonso also applies an aggressive, counter-pressing system. The aggressive press stifles and frustrates the opposition, by disrupting their rhythm and comfort on the ball. Once again possession allows Alonso to apply his men more aggressively in the defensive phase. 
playing fullbacks high and wide, with his center backs also advancing into the attacking third, provides Alonso's counter press with natural defenders if the ball is lost. By controlling and dictating the terms of play in the offensive phase, they can frantically and aggressively win back the ball as soon as it is lost, within the offensive third, and with numbers already congregated. Despite having the fewest accumulated tackles in the Bundesliga, Bayer is second for tackles in the attacking third. Central to this defensive system's effectiveness, are his double pivots, who maintain their central placement between the defensive and attacking lines. The initial press occurs from the front five, however it is the second tier, that is better positioned to bisect passing lines, or confront and dispossess the receiver on the breakout transition. These players can be considered as the system's pressure seal, compressing and limiting any space for the opposition to exploit. The two have been effective, with Palacios leading the league in counter-pressing actions, with Xhaka in third. Leverkusen as a collective, has achieved the Bundesliga's fourth fewest total touches against, with the majority of their oppositional touches occurring in their own half, rather than Leverkusen's. It is interesting to note that Leverkusen attempts the fewest challenges to contest dribblers in the Bundesliga as well, and this is a testament to their control of the game. Open ball situations, in which a dribbler is able to run with the ball at his feet into space, are limited because of this stifling pressure. With frontline pressure, the backline is then able to easily and aggressively man-mark their direct opponents, who usually deploy a single striker, or sometimes two in the counter-attacking transition, creating a 3v2 with numerical superiority, or 2v2 transition defending. The direct play requires alert, reflexive and reactive defending, requiring a pacey backline who can contain the space behind. Kasanu and Tapsaba, as the pacier backs, patrol vertical and diagonal balls into space, while Ta, the slower back, maintains the center as the sweeper, an immediate transitional outlet if the ball is regained. Bayer have allowed the second fewest progressive receptions in the Bundesliga, a testament to their effectiveness at containing direct, progressive passes. In addition to Palacios, Xhaka, Grimaldo, Kasanu, Tapsaba, and Hoffman have been extremely effective as tacklers. Due to Bayer's natural high block against counterattacks, the opposition must attempt to play as direct as possible, producing line breaking, or over the top passes to seek one or two strikers, who are not behind the ball with defensive efforts. Direct play, in the form of medium and long range passes, also puts Alonso's second tier defenders in prime position for interceptions, reflected by the team leaders, Palacios, Casanu, Grimaldo, and Xhaka. At this time of writing, Bayer has conceded the second fewest shot creating actions, with their primary breaches generated from live passes, a natural consequence of playing a possession based, aggressive attacking system. However, Leverkusen limits these breaches with effective counter pressing, and the pressure seal, provided by their central midfielders. When the opposition is more adept at build up play, and pins Bayer in the middle block, 
Bayer plays a back four, with either Grimaldo or Frimpong dropping into the back line, leaving the other fullback to maintain his position in the midfield. When they allow the opposition to build out of the back, Leverkusen can sit back and deploy a man marking adaptation, seeking the counterattack as a result of winning individual duels. Rather than chase the back line, they opt to sit back and apply pressing triggers to win the ball back at more advantageous positions. The opposition will normally direct their attacks toward the sideline, in a more cautious attack through the neutral third, or play extremely direct through the block, once again requiring alert, reactive defending. In open ball situations, the double pivots must make the tackle, or risk having their space invaded. Palacios and Jaka have been effective to maintaining numerical superiority in the transition. The extra man can anticipate the pass, and bisect oppositional lines, while hurting the opposition into numbers. Once again, Palacios has performed at an elite level in transitional situations, in which the opposition breaks through the first line of resistance. The Argentine sits in front of the back two and is tasked with addressing open ball transitions, allowing the center backs to man mark their direct opponents. As the team's leader in ball winning tackles, his contributions have been essential to ensuring that Bayer are not caught off balance when their numbers are so high up the pitch. Bayer has been extremely effective through the oppositional left channel, where they apply aggressive marking to spring the trap, win the ball back, and seek Frimpong for the counter attack. Elite opposition will be able to pin Bayer in the low block, where they prioritize compact central defending, to limit the opposition's attacking options, while also remaining flexible with advanced players in the transition. Bayer only applies an aggressive press along the flanks, however towards critical space, they prioritize a compact, airtight shape. Bayer invites and encourages the opposition to advance as many players, as high up the pitch as possible. As mentioned earlier, Bayer are extremely adept at transitioning from defense to offense on the counter. Alonso utilizes speed by employing his fastest and most elusive players as transitional outlets on the counter attack. As soon as the ball is won back, the transitional outlet is licensed for progressive carries, with his immediate teammates running into vacant space, allowing smooth, flowing and easy transitions. On the counter, positional play is abandoned, and players are rewarded for winning the ball back with ample space to attack. As the opposition approach Leverkusen's goal, Bayer settles into the 4-5-1, or 5-4-1, with 9 of their 10 outfield players behind the ball, and Boniface advance as the target man. The alignment of his center backs, depends on how many strikers the opposition play. Whether the opposition plays two strikers, or one, they will have at least one free man, who can shift to the flanks to contain the 2v1, or remain centrally to deal with trailing runners into the box. The deeper the ball goes into the flanks, the nearer Jonas Hoffman draws toward the back line. This is due to the fact that Alonso's double pivots drift to the flanks to contain the overload, displacing them from the hole. With the pivots drifting to the flanks, Alonso's center backs can engage in bracket coverage against one striker, or man marking versus two or three strikers. In the worst case scenario, Hoffman becomes a de facto defender as the block is stretched thin, from this position, he is still poised as a transitional player on the counter-attack. Centrally, 
Alonso plays highly compact, making it extremely difficult to penetrate for a close shot on goal. The opposition cannot invade the space, because his midfield and backline do not allow any space between their lines. As a result, Bayer faces shots from an average of 17.5 yards, or just near and around the entrance of the penalty box, making it easier for the keeper to track, and nullify oppositional shots. Lukas Horodetsky is currently one of the best keepers in the Bundesliga and the world based on numbers. The Finnish goalkeeper is highly alert, with good diving skills to cover his corner pockets, making him ideal for dealing with a crowded box, and shots from a distance. The opposition has to be pinpoint accurate to get a shot on target, let alone score. Bayer maintains the Bundesliga's second fewest shots, with an astonishing goals per shots on target rate of 0.2, and a clean sheet percentage of 44, good for second in the Bundesliga. To put this into perspective, when compared with all of Europe's big five leagues, Bayer's stats would be good for a placement for the top five most elite defensive units in the world at the moment. As incredible as this system has been to see in action, and despite boasting a perfect record until this time of writing, there is still plenty of football to be played. More teams will study Alonso's system, requiring Alonso to adapt it even further. With the African Cup of Nations on the horizon, Alonso will be losing six players, three of which are crucial to the system. Bayer's next stretch of matches, spanning from January 13 until February 17 will be among the most important of this season. It is likely that Alonso will need to alter his system, or have younger, less proven players step up and fill massive boots. Patrick Schick has already proven that he is up for the task, but Bayer's young core will need to deliver. Regardless of the future results, Xabi Alonso's system, his team, has been a pleasant surprise and undeniably one of the most elite clubs in the world, on both sides of the ball. They have pushed the blue bloods of the Bundesliga to the brink, and have put the world on notice. Only time will tell how this season will play out, and where Alonso will be by the end of the season. However, for now, we can savor this system, and its ingenuity and marvel at the results. Thank you for watching, although this work was a pleasure to make, it took a lot of time, research, and effort. Please leave a like, feel free to comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time.